Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So first off, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my Patreon supporters, Ben. Thanks for your support. Now in today's video, we're going to go over Alfin as a 5 star, and of course I'll do a little bit of gameplay and let you know what I think about him. But the most important question of all is, is he hot or not? Of course he's hot. If my hands are cold, I know who's going to keep them warm. Oh my! Anyways, um, Alfin is our newest fire zone setter. He can VC in and speed minus plus fire zone. Note that he is a tails off, so he does have an over limit, which I'll demonstrate. And also, if you do an AF with enough combo meter, he can activate an extra move that does some damage, but nothing special. More for uh, show, I would say. Note that his personal weapon does give him increased damage when HP is at 80% and below, and he gets there very, very easily, as you'll soon see. Incineration Wave is Fire Slash AoE, crit damage up 50% for himself only unfortunately, and of course depending on the number of Flaming Edge can have up to a 4 times multiplier on the base damage. Note that it does damage the user and up to 30%. So how I found it is that you can stack up to 3 Flaming Edges. Uh, I think the first damage is about 10%, after 2 stacks is 20%, and after 3 stacks which is max is 30% of the current HP. Now, Dragon Swarm is a pretty good self buff. You can get 30, 30 speed and power, 3 turns max stack, so 30, 45, and 60, slash attack on single enemy times 4 XL. Unfortunately, it is a non type attack. And again, this is the one that it activates the over limit Mystic Art if he's low enough in HP. Some of his other moves, like Inferno Torrent, uh, where it goes fire users type attack up. Uh, Rising Phoenix, Physical Resistance down. I wouldn't recommend using them. I do feel that this is pretty weak considering you can get other buffs and debuffs from other enemies. Now, Explosive Ring, I think, is quite interesting. Fire slash single enemy times 5 medium. Increase user's weak point damage. That usually means 100% extra damage against an enemy weak to fire. And increase strength depending on number of flaming edge. Um, you can use that to stack, an, uh, I guess, an additional weak point modifier so that when you're attacking enemies weak to fire, he will do a lot more damage. Again, only a self buff. And finally, Burning Wave is a spam move. Fire slash AoE times 2 can inflict stun and pain. However, guaranteed break and strength depends on the number of flaming edges. If you can get 3 stacks, it's 5 times multiplier and increased damage when critical. And again, self damaging. Now, you notice that most of his moves are self damaging. I find that is quite limiting, especially since, uh, you know, we need to be at full HP a lot of times for either things like hold ground or. Um, in general, when bosses get harder, where they do a ton of damage to you. So keep that in mind. Dragon Swarm, here's your 5-star uh, board. And the Burning Wave are your two 5-star moves. And note the rest of the board here. He does have a mask personality. So if you use, for example, uh, AS Sakia, there's other mask units. Joker, for example, you can now give him extra shared grass stuff. And finally, the standard setup, um, Power of Pain Sword, uh, times 3 with Adversity, which is uh, enemy numbers. Bullseye, as well as MP Consumption, Rose with Thorns. We do have his basic VC Grasta, and so on and so forth. So, let's take him out for a spin. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. I also do have a Patreon account for those who want to support me this way. So of course, as usual, we're going to wander into Purgatory to take on enemies weak to fire, just kind of show his uh, basic moves. Normally what I normally uh, would do would be start off with Dragon Swarm, probably one stack to give him 30 and 30. A lot of times in AFs you might not have enough uh, time in the AF to get 3 stacks going, especially if you're in fire zone, because remember, if it's a non-type attack, it does not add to the AF bar. So um, in slash zone though, it does help, and I, have demo I will demonstrate that as well. Now in terms of his incineration wave, if it is an AoE, uh, yes. it does give him increased crit damage plus 50. However, keep this in mind. All the tails, well, these two tails of both Lloyd and Alfin as DPS, they don't set their own crit rate. So they do rely on others to do so, or if you equip a weapon that can do so for you. So um, it's a big downside, especially for newer units. I find that without crit guarantees, you're doing so little damage, it does um, end up being a little bit of a nuisance. Now that being said, you can clearly see that as you do more and more stacks of the Burning Wave, it does more damage as you get up to 3 stacks of the um, Flaming Edge, and note that it can inflict stun, which is quite nice, um, not very useful in the long run, but against mobs and early to mid game, not bad at all. 
Alright, so for our first example, we're going to take on again one of the artificial spears, the one weak to fire. This is the Insulin Ventorum, I believe, 20,000 uh, BC. Um, yeah, so anyways, first turn AF, we have Aisha as our fire set setter, and we can just uh, use AF Miu as our crit setter. So I know she's a little bit older, uh, most people probably haven't used her for a very very long time, but I still think she's got some uh, niche, and don't forget that she still has a manifest coming. But that being said, this video is not about AF Miu, it is about Alfin, and so uh, what we really want to do is try to um, use Pride of Midlands to kind of boost his damage with guaranteed crit, if you can set um, a guaranteed crit or increased crit chance, you can also set the explode. Remember the explosion ring, which gives him extra weak point damage, and then you would have the um, incineration to set up for his increased crit damage, and finally burning wave over and over and over again. Um, he does set pain, although not guaranteed. Probably I don't know, but the rate probably very similar to uh, other um, type of pain and poison. Now remember what I said about his. Uh, uh, you know, limitations. If you take any damage, which he does after doing a move, note that if you are fighting enemies, like even this super boss is really not that powerful. I died! So um, I just wanted to include that clip in here just to kind of give you an indication of his uh, limitations, which unfortunately are, you know, there. And if you're wondering, based on RNG alone, this fight took an hour to get, um, you know, the right clip to put in this video just because of the fact that he does do a lot of damage, the randomness of the enemies can inflict damage or fatal damage, and being that almost all his moves do damage to himself and at, remember 3 stacks, it can essentially do 30% self damage, it really 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 sucks. Now I do have a power absorb sword which I don't remember where it came from, I think it's from pre uh, present day Garalia, which is the first Garalia dungeon unlocked if you buy them all from Nagsham. That does allow you to absorb 1% of inflicted damage um, you know, and heal himself. However, he takes damage, as you can see, after he does the damage. So it's not like he takes damage first and then heals it back to full. No, he takes damage after he does the hit. So um, yeah, that is helps him keep himself at a moderately high. However, you're still taking 30%, which only leaves you at 70%. And in this case, against this fight, less than 3000 HP, which can be very limiting in terms of uh, getting killed. As you can see, RNG with the Insul Inventory was annoying. Um, we can get things like Kickback, 100% Shield, um, you know, uh, 3 Slashes that can cause pain, and of course the fixed 3000 damage. It can also uh, stun and change zone. Um, yeah, very very annoying. However, we got, the, we got things going. And we're going to just VC in. One other thing about ASMU is that don't forget she does status clear, which doesn't really help the stun for Alfin this turn. Um, it does help for you know other things, but it doesn't do like he won't recover same turn to win. And we're just going to finish off the fight right here. So as a DPS, I would consider him only moderate at best. I do think that um, a lot of newer units can do more damage, even Aldo, obviously now I, I have him at 255, can do significantly more damage than um, Alfin. And one of the limitations of Alfin versus Lloyd, which I did do a 5 star review of as well, is that his break is in his attack move, which is not um, preemptive. And so with Lloyd, you can actually use his break to set up preemptively and then um, you know have your other DPS do the damage that you need. In this case, he self boosts quite a few ways in terms of either weak point damage, uh, power and speed, um, crit damage up, and so on and so forth. But again, the fact that he can't set his own crit and um, self damaging is is can be very dangerous at the later stages in the game. All right. So that being said, got it done. Beat this boss after some trial and error, and hopefully you did enjoy um, you know the uh, video so far. Uh, if you do, make sure you give it a, a thumbs up here. Alright, so uh, same setup for Aisha, really not optimized. Again, this showcase is more about Alfin to kind of uh, get things going and, uh, uh, you know, kind of showcase some of his abilities and limitations. Stan Sander Grasta setup. Note that with the Power Absorb, I did use the Dormented Grasta that gives 25% uh, type attack. And Altina's just in the back. Cress is carrying Grasta for everyone else. Okay, so in our second example, we're going to um, use him as our zone setter and fight one of the older um, manifests out there. 
And again, I know a lot of you will probably be asking, so between Lloyd and Alfin, who do you think is better? I think it really depends on each use. So um, if you want to compare, I did use Lloyd against this um, pair of, a duel of fights as well. Um, so you can kind of see uh, how the strategy kind of changes depending on how you're using the unit. And that's really not uh, anything wrong with it, but it is um, you know, interesting that you do have to set things up a little bit differently. Now, obviously, we can VC him in to set Fire Zone. And again, if you're relatively new to the game, um, obviously having any zone setter is great. I would argue that uh, Aisha might be easier for you to get and optimize rather than Alfin. However, Alfin is a slash user and you can definitely get a lot more synergy out of slash units that way. Especially since Kid is also free. Now, if you look at the dead setup and how quickly damage can be dealt, Notice that AS Miu got one HP stopper out of one of the, um, you know, Butterfly's Dream, I mean, uh, the uh, AS Iska's Manifest pair, as opposed to Alfin, which hasn't really begun to do anything. And so um, that's another limitation that I noticed as I was playtesting him. Um, I would argue that as a support and getting him to ramp up would be really useful, except for the fact that you want three stacks of power and speed, which takes three moves. Then you can either do a weak point or a crit damage up, and then finally do his um, damaging moves that does, um, you know, like a crit, uh, sorry, crit damage increased if hitting crit, and also break stun and so on and so forth. But, you know, um, so many other units can do so much more quick damage with very few drawbacks where as opposed to him uh, taking a lot of self damage. And if you think I'm very critical of Alfin, I mean the point of the 5 star review is really to kind of let you know my opinions. You can definitely let me know in the comments below if you found him being awesome or more useful than what I demonstrated here. But just uh, in my experimentation, I found I had to work around him as opposed to building around him, if that makes sense. Like when you're building a team, you would usually choose four members and two in the back, obviously, and each one fits a certain role. Now, obviously, Aldo, for example, is our main DPS, um, and Kid is our debuffer, so on and so forth, and ASBU for the crit setter and some DPS. Now, as opposed to him, what does he do? Not nearly as much as you would like, given his setup requirements. Anyways, back to the action, um, you can uh, see that I activate his Concerto Arts because he self-damaged himself to the point where he's below 25% uh, HP. And I was also able to de uh, just demonstrate his, um, uh, sorry, his Mystic Art is the one 25% less, and the Concerto Art is the one that was glowing yellow that basically did an extra little combo with Aldo um, during the AF. Again, I don't think the damage is very significant, so it's cool to watch. But, you know, I think the devs built it in there, unless it's very abusable, which I'm not really sure it is um, at this point. Again, this is just my initial, um, you know, views on this unit. And of course, Crest is a grass to holder as usual. Iska's just there so we can fight the Manifest. All right. So anyways, in our final example, we will use... Um, Alfin mostly as a support here. Now one granted, one really good thing about him is he speed himself up really really quickly. So with three stacks of that power and speed, you are getting uh, him to go really really fast, which it does allow for more moves in AF, and therefore, especially in things like Flash Strike Zone or um, Slash Zone or anything like that, he does end up helping you a little bit longer along the way. Not only that, it is four times hit, and so if you want to use things like Combo Rate, Grass or so on and so forth, um, he can definitely help you along there, though, though not as uh, awesome as combo rate as Lloyd in Fire Zone or Fire Slash. But here we are, what we're going to do is we're going to eventually set up Fire Zone with AS Hardy. We're going to set up Break with, um, you know, with uh, Alfin, and then we're going to use AS Yuen as our main DPS. Now, if you're wondering what boss this is, some of you may not have finished this yet. This is actually the Complex Dream, which is a Chrono Cross crossover. This is the true uh, Lynx super fight, uh, which can be unlocked. You can definitely see uh, some of my videos on my playlist in terms of the Complex Dream to find out how to unlock and uh, defeat this character. And there you go. Burning Wave sets up the break. And one shot. Boom. So, yeah. Very, very awesome in that sense that he has a little bit of everything. More of a jack of all trades, not really excelling in any one area. Um, 
but he does have a lot of versatility and I think that is the theme that I've seen so far with all these uh, new tales of. Very versatile, um, most of them with the exception of Alfin, have actually two different weapon type moves. Like for example, uh, Lloyd has Pierce and Slash. I think Colette has Blunt and Magic. And I think even um, uh, Shion has Pierce and I think something else. So anyways, all right. In conclusion, um, Alfin, honestly, um, in my expectation, is mid at best. I do like his kit however i just couldn't find a way to draw out massive amounts of damage or massive amounts of support most of his moves are very selfish and do not give buffs to the other members of your team anyways thanks for watching we'll see you next time